Mortgage Coach Coaching Call. Really excited to be here. We've got a great, great call on, on the deck for you. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of great content, and I really hope that each one of you can tune in, you know, take notes. Remember, these calls are all recorded, so if for any reason you have to jump off early or you happen to miss any of the previous calls, uh, just know that we do record these. I'll be showing you where you can access those here shortly. But I want to welcome everybody to the mortgage industry's best weekly sales meeting. My name is Anthony Savala, success coach here at Mortgage Coach. For many of you, if you haven't had a chance, I recommend that you definitely connect with us on Facebook. Um, also, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm excited about our special guest today, Mark Mayoka. He's going to be here, and he's going to be talking to us about some really, really great strategies and techniques all of you can be using in your business today. And I mentioned the Facebook fan page. It's a great way to connect with Mortgage Coach, really stay on top of everything we're doing, whether it's the mobile app. And as you all know, if you're not mobile, you are standing still. So I really hope that each one of you can take advantage of that app, whether it's on an iPhone, whether it's on an Android. We have had seen tremendous success with our members who have embraced that. And it's free, it's easy, and it's simple. Uh, but definitely connect with us. We'd love to hear feedback and really you know, just see uh, what's going on with you. And if you have some success stories, we always want to hear those. A couple things that you will see if you go to that page, uh, we do have a lot of great posts coming out. We're really trying to do a good job of getting you quality content uh, that you can use uh, with your clients and, and really in your conversations. Uh, one of the ones you'll see if you go to that Facebook page is something we'll be talking about a little bit today, and it's the idea of skipping that bagel, saving that money, brewing your own coffee, and paying off your mortgage faster. We had a lot of great uh, results from that post. A lot of our members really think it's a great strategy to show your client that you are a, you know, originator that cares about their future. We actually had 30 shares of this, so definitely, guys, if you haven't checked it out, uh, please do so. And if you'd like to see a presentation of really this strategy and how you can utilize it, just go into the Mortgage Coach app and our fearless leader, CEO Dave Savage, actually created this video. Uh, so just go into the app and type in Savage, and it'll take you right to a total cost analysis showing a client how you can reinvest your coffee money and knock over seven years off the mortgage. So if you haven't done that, uh, definitely do it. think you really like it. Um, also, remember how to do that. You just go to the app. Remember, if you open a link from Edge on your phone, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's an Android, and if you don't have the app, don't worry about it. What's going to actually happen is the system will prompt you to install it. So you will be able to just quickly install that app and really just get that experience that, that's really been happening. A couple things to know about the app before I bring in our great guest today. I uh, just want to let you know the results I've been seeing with realtors. Okay, So we're, we're all going into this purchase market and we're all trying to have a sustainable purchase pipeline. I can't stress enough, if you want to reach your realtors, I, I think a couple weeks ago you heard from Joe Petour, our president. He was showing some stats with realtors out there. 94% of realtors use mobile communication as their primary source. So what does that mean? It means they're out in the field. It means they're using a mobile device. And if you want to reach these individuals, if you want to get some quality leads from quality agents, I strongly recommend that you package your value in a way that they can see and they can take action. And that's really what the app will do for you. So again, can't stress enough, if you have any questions about downloading it or any strategies you can be using with real estate agent, please just email us, support at mortgagecoach.com. We we'll want to make sure that each one of you can start using that right now. There's no time to waste, as we all know. We want to act quickly in this purchase market, so let's do it. Okay, so today is all about leadership. Today is all about being a leader in your marketplace. It's all about being a leader in the industry. So, you know, really want you to take take note what we're going to be talking about today. I'm really excited to bring in our special guest. If you didn't hear me before, Mark Mayoka. He's the author of What's Your Rate? He's he's an accomplished author. He's a top seller in Amazon. You can find his book on Amazon. We'll be showing a couple ways you can access that book later on. Um, he's a consistent top producer. He's been a mortgage coach member for a very long time. Uh, but I can't stress enough what I've talked to him about and what I'm excited for, to share today. I uh, want you each to know that he's accomplished a veteran in the industry, and what he's sharing with you is, is not anything just for the top producer. It's not something that only people with teams can be utilizing. This is for every one of you out there that wants to grow your business. You know, we're, we're here to make sure you can do that. So, Mark, 
Really excited that you could be here. Welcome to the call. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you very much. Great, great. Really glad you could be here. And you can also connect with Mark on LinkedIn, everybody, so you see that on the screen. Uh, you can see for yourself how you can connect with them. And we'll be giving you a couple ways at the end as we go through. Okay, Mark, so glad you could be here. Could you please tell us a little bit about your mortgage practice, you know, what market you're in, and really what you've been specializing in for the past couple of years? Yeah, I'm, I'm out of Boston. Uh, I've been in the business since February 1998. So, uh, so it's been about 15 years. Uh, I'm the producing uh, sales manager of Sage Bank. Uh, we're in Wilmington. Um, just it's it's just outside of Boston. Great, great. And I know when we talked, you had talked about you know you've been mortgage coach member for some time. I know one of the things we talked about your mortgage practice. We're going to be talking about your book here in a second. Uh, but currently, I know you said you were an independent producer for a long time currently manage a team and how long I'm sorry how long have you been in the industry uh, 15 years since February 1998 excellent excellent so one of the things we usually ask all of our guests and I, I really stress this I probably didn't ask you before but what is it that you really like about being an originator? what do you love about being a mortgage originator um, really just making a difference in uh, in my clients lives it's it's the the home is usually one of the first things that someone does uh, in their financial life and it triggers so many other things that they're not thinking of at the time they're just thinking of of the home and to be able to help them navigate through that is is really something I uh, I get I get some joy out of that in a nutshell describes a mortgage coach member you know you're really putting the clients uh, you know, needs first and making sure, you know, you can help them, you know, really make a sound decision about the mortgage. And for me, you know, that really means a big deal. You know, I have a special connection to that as well. I love being in this industry and I'm really glad to hear that. And one of the things I want to talk about now is we talked about, you know, your book. And your book, I really liked your book. I haven't finished it yet. started reading this. But, you know, tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, it's called What's Your Rate? And, you know, if you just share with us, you know, why you, you wrote the book and, you know, some of the, the driving factors behind that. Well, the, the reason I'm um, passionate about the concept in the book really goes back to, um, to my parents. Uh, back in, in 1986, uh, my dad passed away of cancer unexpectedly at 51 years old. And... Um, you know, they didn't have any life insurance, so they were doing very well. They owned a business, um, and they had no life insurance. And uh, I watched my mother, uh, you know, struggle to make things work for the next uh, 20 years. And we had a great life, but it, it would have been a lot easier. And the, the ironic thing about it was they sold insurance for a living. They, showed, they sold property and casualty insurance. And... You know, it's that the whole story of the, the cobbler's kids that have no shoes. They, they uh, mm -hmm. you know, they had done a bunch of, uh, they, they bought two houses. They, um, they did some work on the house. So they had been through the mortgage process many times. And I'm sure the mortgage originator never thought to bring up if they had enough insurance if something unexpected happened. And uh, because they were in the insurance business, he probably thought they already knew. And uh, so that's why I'm passionate about it because there's so much more to just buying a home. There's so much. But the reason we called it What's Your Rate is because I wanted something to be able to hand to clients that kind of showed them, you know, there's so much more to this than just the interest rate. The interest rate's going to change numerous times a day, but there's so many other things that a home purchase triggers that, that you really need to think about. I also wanted something to give my referral partners to show them this is how the process works, this is how I work, this is when you should refer me, this is what you sh should say when you refer me. I mean, just to, I wanted almost like a, uh, a, a walking, talking business card that could really articulate how I work. Perfect. I mean, one of the best things I liked about this is you started, you know, started reading the book and you start sharing it with the group here. You know, you mentioned absolutely there is a lot more than just the rate. And in today's market, I think you know, you know, we have consumers inundated with uh, commercials and, and people, aver you know, advertising really low rates with the smallest print you'll ever find. And, 
even in things like social media, uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of advertisements show, talking about rate, rate, and rate. And as your book says, and as you really showcase in your practice, you know, it's not all about the rate. And I think many of the members on this call, you know, if you live by that philosophy that it's not about rate and payment, it's really about the benefit that you can provide your clients. And you know, some of the things we're going to be talking about, as you, you notice on the, this cover, your core seven. We'll get to that here in a second. Curious though, how long, you know, as you, you thought about writing a book, how long did that actually take you in terms of the process uh, when you, from the start to the finish, how long did that, that process take? About two years. It, it took a while. It was, uh, it was just a lot of uh, um, scratching down notes in a journal and then, uh, you know, then it took, a, it took a while to bring it to life. I'm not the, the greatest writer, um, so, so that was actually the hardest part. Yeah, I, I bet you know taking you know something as complex as really a, a you know fine-tuned process and purchasing a mortgage and being able to put that into a book. I'm sure that must have been pretty intense. So I'm I'm definitely glad that that's something that you were able to accomplish. I think many of the people on this call, you know, you can you know take a lesson from from Mark here and realize that there's plenty of ways to add value to your network uh, more than just saving somebody money. You can really help them figure out a plan to protect their financial future. Uh, and as we all know, if you can show them how they can have a solid financial future, you know, that's how you will get those referrals. That's how you will get those quality agents and referral partners in your network. So you know, as far as the book, is there anything particular um, about the book that you haven't mentioned already that you feel that the group should know? Or anything that you think they can learn from the book that they can immediately take action on? Um, the reason, one of the reasons I wrote the book was I was hoping that um, originators and real estate agents would actually hand it to to their clients, um, to to really just have them read about it so they wouldn't be shopped just on rate, um, and and that was that was actually my goal because the way the book is worded, it shows them that. You know, it's not all about rate. Uh, it's funny you, you talked about the the coffee example. As I have a, a example in there that, you know, for every eighth of a percent in interest rate on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, is after taxes less than three dollars a week, which is less than a than a cup of coffee. So I, I give the coffee analogy on on how, you know, it, it's it's something. Don't don't cut off. A good originator and and not use them for what what's the price of a cup of coffee? Forego that cup of coffee instead. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things you know, as we show, and, and if all the members, you know, you download that presentation that Dave Savage created, you're going to see how really easy it is to take that conversation away from rate and payment and focus on things like paying off the mortgage sooner, brewing your own coffee at home, and and, and you know, saving that Starbucks money. And you know, putting it back towards towards that mortgage and really becoming debt free faster. So that's really really great. Uh, and I think you probably agree with me, Mark. You know, many years ago, as you've been in the industry as I have, you know, for many years, clients wanted to borrow, borrow, borrow. And now, what it looks and seems as though the industry has really made that shift. Everybody wants to be debt free. And if you can show that to a client, you can really create that trust faster. You know, you increase the velocity of trust with your clients and ultimately that's going to get those commitments much faster. So another question I wanted to ask you and we're going to get make sure everyone knows how to get this book and who they can contact to do so and and one thing I thought was really great is Mark, you know, you told me that many offices, real estate agents, loan originators, they're buying this book in bulk because they want to use this as a value add. They're sending it out. So we're going to make sure everybody knows if you do want to purchase this in bulk, you'll have an opportunity to do so. We'll make sure you get the right information. Uh, as we go through later in the call. So one question I want to ask you, Mark, you know, how long have you been a mortgage coach member and how has being a mortgage coach member really helped your business? I've, I started using mortgage coach uh, in 1998, um, almost probably six months after I started. Um, it, it's been essential to my business. I, I work a, with a lot of financial advisors. Um, and it's funny, my, my top financial advisor, um, who we've done a ton of business, I was able to generate 70 referrals for him in an 18-month uh, time frame, where during that time I got about 10 million in closings back from him. 
and wow. he, he, he was quoted in saying that he, he would not work with a mortgage originator who did not have Mortgage Coach. And it was something that was new to him because he had uh, been in business for a while and hadn't been working with me uh, before. Uh, and then when he saw Mortgage Coach, he was like, you know, I would, if, if I didn't work with you in the future, I would have a requirement of a mortgage originator to have Mortgage Coach. It, it, it's been essential. It's been huge for me. That is great. And I know you really subscribe to the philosophy that you feel that every client should be receiving a total cost analysis. Really, that's what we believe here at Mortgage Coach, that, you know, providing that client the short, mid, and long-term performance of their loan really does make that impact. And for me to hear that what you just said, you know, 70 referrals in return, you've got 10 million in closed loan volume. I mean, that is just a huge game changer. And everybody on this call, you know, you want your referral partners, you want those agents really saying exactly what Mark said, that, you know, I won't work with another originator unless they're using Mortgage Coach. I refuse. Um, because they should see that same value that all of you see, you know, as being a Mortgage Coach member. And that's great. And, and Mark, you said you've been since 1998. Mortgage Coach got started yeah. around 1997. So, you know, you've been there from the beginning. Uh, really happy about that. You know, it's, it's great to see someone who's, who's seen the evolution of Mortgage Coach and, you know, with everything we're doing now and, you know, some of the things we'll, we'll continue to talk about through the call, you know, it's, it's really nice to see someone who's, who's really made it through. As you've seen so many people, you know, leave the industry, but to see a veteran like yourself, you know, that's definitely an accomplishment. And one thing, you know, we talked about, you know, I know you do home buyer events, and especially right now, the shift to purchase, and we have all these home buyers. Um, please let us know what you're doing at these events and, you know, anything about them that you think would be valuable to Mortgage Coach members. Well, the, the, um, the presentation that I do is actually, it, it follows my book to a T. I mean, the book is basically um, my process uh, when, when I'm referred to purchase um, loan. It, pretty much everything I say, everything I do, uh, how I cross-sell, um, it, it's basically it's written as a story, but it's it's basically a a, a start to finish of what I do for a client, um, you know, long and short term. Uh, the seminar that I do is it it walks them through that that progression where they they're buying a home, how they finance the home, and how they meet who is called the core seven, the other seven professionals, the other six professionals other than the mortgage person. Um, how they meet those those people and how those people add value to their full financial plan. So, Excellent. so my my presentation follows that. I just it's a, it's a, it's a set presentation that I have that mirrors it. Great. And how many home buyer events do you think you you've done at this point? Um, for career, probably between forty and fifty. Uh, um, I've done less recently. Um, because of the way the market is, I'm going to be uh, looking to do more now that it's slowed down a little with the rates jumping a little bit. So uh, I'm going to be looking to do more. My, I have a goal of one a month. One a month. Perfect. And, you know, something that, you know, as a success coach here at Mortgage Coach, you know, you know, we all know that oftentimes, you know, the magic happens when you get out of that comfort zone. So for you, I'm sure when you did your first one, you're probably a little bit nervous. Do you have any tips for anyone who's contemplating doing, you know, a home buyer seminar? Is there anything you 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 really want them to know, you know, about preparing for those, or anything that you really you want to strategize around for for organizing a home buyer event? Um, I would say just get out and do it. Um, the way I wrote mine out, it's it's almost like I'm reading it. It's just a uh, it's almost a fill in the blank um, home buying seminar. But what ends up happening at the home buying seminars is the the Q and A is really when, like you said, the magic happens. The Q&A is when the people really listen to you, and it just, it's, it's just like talking. It becomes really easy. It's not, a, it's not as much about the performance as it is about the content. Absolutely. And something myself, you know, I've gone to several home buyer events recently. There's several in our area. I'm just curious to see what's, you know, what's going on. You know, I, I know my credit union, for example, offers them. Now, one thing to consider for everybody on this call, you know, as he mentioned, the Q&A, that is where the magic happens. And there's many people, if you're running a home buyer event, uh, oftentimes you know, there's people in that audience that they're a little hesitant to raise their hand and ask a question. So one thing I would recommend, too, and I'm not sure, I'm sure Mark probably agree, 
Uh, make sure there's a way for those individuals to get those questions to you. You know, they may not want to ask it live at the event, but they'll be more than happy to email you. Uh, so let them know that it's okay for them to do that. You know, like Mark said, you want those questions. You want the, that interaction with the group. Uh, so, so please, you know, welcome that and make sure, you know, your clients and, and the attendees of your, those home buyer events, you know, feel comfortable in doing so. And we, we mentioned cross-selling. So that's the next, next question I want to talk about. Uh, what exactly or how exactly do you cross-sell your referral partners? I know we talked about you have two, two really good ways. You do one at application and then you do one at closing. And if you could just talk about, you know, how you do the one at app and then really how you do that one at the end. There, there, those are the two, the, the two that have worked best. Um, there, there's a few different points where, where I'm able to cro cross sell the referral partners. Um, but the one at application, I call it the cash flow cross sell. And it basically, you know, just like everyone else, they do a, a, a consultation where they make sure the loan's integrated into their overall plan. And then we, we work through, find out how much they're pre approved for. Uh, and we're issuing a pre-approval. Right at the end of the conversation, I'll basically say, you know, all mortgage lenders use debt-to-income ratios to figure out what you can qualify for. And that includes your housing payment plus the debt that we see on your credit report. That doesn't include some of your lifestyle expenses like children, going out to dinner, or whatever you would spend your money on. What I'd like to rem recommend is that you speak to the advisor on my team who will be willing to do a full cash flow analysis to make sure uh, and make you really feel comfortable uh, with how much you're, you're, you're financing. Does that make sense? And they most of the time will say yes, and I'll just make the introduction via, uh, via email, and that's usually how it happens. I'd say we're probably 7 out of 10 on that. Um, the second... The second piece, which is which is pretty easy, and it's and it's twofold. It's at closing, called the closing cross sell. Uh, on a purchase, we basically just call them at the end and tell the client, you know, congratulations on your closing. You have an estate now. There are some financial things that have changed that you have to make sure that you protect. With that in mind, I'd like to make the introduction to the advisor on my team, so you can handle that. Would it be okay if I put you two in touch? And I'm mentioning stuff about that during the whole process, so it's so it's not it's not surprising to them, mm -hmm. and they and they almost always say yes. And then what I do, at, especially at the cash flow cross sell, is I will send out a total cost analysis with the introduction, so they also have that to to work on. On a refinance, it actually has it's the most simple one, and it's too bad rates have gone up because it was it was working great in the low rate environment. Basically, you know, let's say, for example, they're going from 5% to 4%, just to use easy numbers, and let's say they're saving $150 a month. Right when they close, I'll send out a total cost analysis that shows their previous loan versus the new loan. And I actually have an email that I just copy and paste, and it basically says, you know, you've, you were making your payment without a problem before the closing of this refinance. You've just freed up. $150 a month cash flow, let's make sure you do what's right with this. I put your financial advisor on this email or the financial advisor that I'm referring, I put them on this email to help you reallocate those funds properly. And I'll just send an introduction email like that. I mean, that, that in itself, result, those results in so many referrals to the financial advisors. And it's predictable, so they know that it's happening. They know, okay, Mark's closing a bunch of refinances, you know, I should be seeing that email come across where I'm going to get these clients. And that makes some of the financial advisors try to refer as many people to me for a refinance uh, as possible because I'm helping them free up money for, for investment. I'm helping, sometimes it's not even a client of theirs where they're introducing that person to me for, for a home purchase. They're, they're, <laughs> Well, one of the things you said as you talked about that, you know, oftentimes it's great. You know, we talk a lot about getting referrals from agents. We talk a lot about referrals uh, from financial planners. But what you just said, you know, is, is gold. It's really the idea that, hey, I've got 
a way to introduce my clients to the financial planner where I can bring a steady, a steady stream of, of referrals to them, and in turn, you know, they're, they're more than happy to, to reciprocate and provide me with a referral. So having a, a really a process that you just mentioned, but you really just CC, you're already talking about the financial planner. You talked about, you know, when you're, you're wrapping up that closing that, you know, you're, especially with a purchase, you know, you now have an estate. You're letting the client know things have changed. You need to be prepared. I've got the right network to do so. In a second, we're going to be talking about that network that you've created. But, you know, one of the things I think is very important for all the listeners to know is don't wait till the very, very end to talk about some of these things with your clients. You know, be sure to really, and I'm sure, you know, Mark's book, you know, talks about all of this and at what point you should be doing these things. But the idea that you want to make sure you're, you're talking about the overall plan as you're going through. Okay, you don't just wait to the very, very end and then say, oh, yeah, I've got a financial planner. You know, you, you definitely want to make sure you, you drive that value home at several key points throughout the process, you know, so you can really be prepared uh, during that time. Oftentimes, Mark, when I talk to members, you know, one of the things that's really important for them to know, and I, I really stress that, is that they have the conversation with the client about rates going up before it happens. I think you know this, right? If you've, if you've talked to a client and they're prepared for the potential of a rate increase, you know, it's not as difficult of a conversation than if they are surprised or they're shocked that the rates went up. But if you can prepare a client and, and let them know some of the, the variables that can happen, uh, some of the things they need to be prepared for, you know, it, it's really like that, that old mantra, you know, hope for the best but prepare for the worst. And in doing so, you know, you really provide your client with a much better plan, a much better, um, you know, plan of action for them to take. So that is really, really great. And you said at app and at closing. So I hope everybody was listening to that. You know, those are just two of the, the big ones that he uses. Uh, but I think, you know, there's many different ways you could cross-sell your referral partner, especially with Edge. You know, with the video feature, you can quickly cross-sell them on that video. Uh, it's really too easy not to do it. But what I really want to talk about now, and, and this is, I think, going to be a huge, huge value for everybody who's listening in, but I want to talk about Mark's Core 7. And, Mark, if you could just tell us a little bit about your Core 7 networking group and list a little bit about how you run your meetings. Okay, great. Um, basically, I have a, a Core 7 group um, that I work with. I have, I have a couple, but there's one that really, uh, really does it correctly. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's myself, uh, a real estate agent, a financial advisor, an accountant, a property and casualty insurance person, an estate planning attorney, and um, who did I leave out? And a, and a real estate attorney. And basically we meet once a week. Uh, the meetings are staggered where we'll meet as a group once a week and then the next week we'll have like a one-on-one -on -one where a couple of us get together. And we, we have specific steps and specific um, things they have to do. For example, each professional has specific referral points when they're supposed to cross-sell the others, where it's systematic, it's predictable, and it's accountable. And we kind of hold each other accountable each week when we meet. So when we have the group, the group meeting, you know, the first thing we do is we kind of go over the rules of engagement, which means, you know, just a safe, candid environment, you know, no egos, leave the egos at the door and, and just, you know, have, a, have everyone there to try to make everybody better. Um, then after we, we go over that, we actually go around the room where each person talks about what's going on in their business and, you know, how many referrals have been, been generated. Um, then we do what's called a Core 7 lesson. So, like, we'll spend some time on, like, that cash flow cross-sell. We'll just spend some time going over that and making sure everybody really, really understands, you know, why that cash flow cross-sell and the handoff to the financial advisor is happening. Then we'll, the fourth thing we'll do is we'll put one person on what we call the hot seat. And that person will just get barraged from everyone in the group with questions and uh, constructive criticism. And it's, it's based on two questions, which are, what am I doing that you'd like me to stop doing? And what am I not doing that you'd like me to do more of? Um, and then after that, we, uh, we basically have homework for, not homework, but just, you know, hey, okay, we're meeting. 
the financial advisor, the accountant, and the mortgage guy are meeting on the one-on-one -on -one next week uh, to, to discuss how they can work better together. And it's just a, a way of being accountable. I, I like it better than some of the major networking uh, groups because there's something specific to it. Um, my, my, my financial advisor is able to say to me, Mark, how many you know, loan consultations have you done in the last couple weeks? And then is able to say, well, what happened on the cash flow cross sell because I haven't gotten any referrals from you, and we'll be able to talk openly about it instead of you know kind of hiding behind uh, you know something that you know we we can bring out some of the some some of the truth on you know how how we should be working together uh, the best. I mean, this this one group was was responsible for for almost half my income last year. Well, a couple key things, you know, there's a lot to talk about with the Course 7. Uh, for everyone out there, again, you you know, you really, really want to dive into this. You know, the, the idea of a Course 7, and just the word itself, the core, and, you know, Mark's going to mention that right now, but the idea that this group has really driven uh, a lot of his income over the past year, and this is a group of seven individuals. I, I talked to a lot of members, Mark, uh, you know, who want to get, you know, a lot, a lot of new agent relationships. And oftentimes what we find out is, you know, what, what's, what's better for the originator? You know, 30 agent relationships who send leads every once in a while or 7 or 10 agents that send you quality leads all the time. And I think many of the people on this call would rather have quality leads from quality agents, maybe not having as many in their network, uh, but really focusing on the ones that really are going to be providing that that level of you know the production enhancement by by doing that with with the quality lead so I think this is a great example of that having a core seven group of professionals that are accountable to one another I think you know you mentioned mark that's that's really a huge takeaway the idea that you know you want to hold your referral partners accountable in the same way that they want to hold you accountable and if you know they're not receiving those referrals you know you're going to talk about it and everyone is on the same page. I think one thing I, for everyone on this call listening in right now, one thing in my short time really getting to know Mark, uh, what he does a great job of, uh, he's a very effective communicator. Okay, He really makes sure that his message is being heard. Uh, he wants to make sure he understands both sides of the conversation. So really, as you talk to your referral partners, as you go into those, those meetings and you're really working for those appointments, you know, remember it's not just about what they can do for you. But really, what you can do for them, and, it, and if you provide that much value, you know it's it's definitely going to come back to you. So you know that's a huge takeaway. So a couple notes I think everybody should be writing down. You know, being accountable to your network, being accountable to your referral partners, and you know, Mark, you mentioned those two two questions. You know, what is it that I'm doing that you'd like me to stop doing, and then what is it that I, I I'm not doing that you'd like me to do more of? Is that right? Is that is that how to say it? Yep. Perfect. So again, you just think about those two questions, guys. You know, what am I doing that you'd like me to stop doing? What am I not doing that you'd like me to do more of? And point blank, ask your referral partners that. You know, Mark goes over in detail about this uh, in his book. But you know, this is just a, a nice, simple, easy way uh, for you to really take a look at the relationships you have with your agents, find out where you stand with your agents, your financial planners, your the attorneys in your network, um, because the last thing you want to do is continue to do things that aren't making an impact in that relationship. And if you can have them really share candid feedback with you, uh, as Mark mentioned about his Core 7 group, you know, they put someone in the hot seat. And I'm sure at times, Mark, probably it's uncomfortable to be in that hot seat. But being accountable to the group. It's usually me. Yeah, okay, yeah, right? <laughs> they put you in there. So the idea that you want to be accountable uh, and you want to make sure that that open communication is, is there with your agents. And, or, or anyone in your group, and for someone to say, hey, you know, Anthony, you know, I really love how, you know, you've been showing my clients this or that, but I'd really much appreciate if you were to start cross-selling me every time you provide, you know, an analysis to your clients, I, every time it'd really, really be, uh, you know, impactful for me. Uh, and having them say those types of things, or for you to really identify, you know, what they're looking for. Oftentimes, you know, as I, I talk to members who are struggling in their business, one thing we find out is, you know, they're really not looking at what their, their referral partners need. You know, they're looking at what they need. But really, at the end of the day, what are you doing for your referral partners that makes you referable? 
Uh, you know, that's a great question. Mark, you probably uh, hear that too. You know, you're, you're a very referable originator. People want to refer you. As you mentioned before, the guy said he wouldn't use anybody else but you. And because you use Mortgage Coach, it made it even that much better. But, you know, so think about that. You know, this is a, a question all of you can think to yourself. What is it that makes you referable? Write those things down and really, really focus on those things. And then really reference that with your, your network. Find out, do they agree? Is, is that really why they refer you business? And if it's something that you do really, really well, and that's why they like sending you business, well, great, capitalize on that. Improve on that. Get better at what they're looking for. Uh, because as you see with the Core 7 group, this is seven professionals, guys. He's not talking about a Core 70. He is literally talking about Core 7. And, you know, he told me, just like he said before, he's able to get 70 referrals for $10 million, uh, from the gentleman earlier. Uh, and the idea that a group like this can bring you know, upwards of a quarter million dollars in, in you know, revenue for you, it is definitely huge. So take advantage of that. You know, I know in your book you mentioned referrals and scripting and things like that. Um, just curious, as far as getting this core uh, seven established, how long did it really take you to, to find these individuals and really, really put this group together? Uh, it, it was fairly easy. It was mostly people that I had uh, been working with um, already. Um, but the, the best thing about it, a question I always have is, well, if you only have, you know, a Core 7 group, you only have one real estate agent. It, it would take too long to explain, but each person in the group has specific things they're supposed to do. And if everyone's executing, it's plenty of business for everyone in the group. So you know the the financial advisor can be a phenomenal referral source for the real estate agent and you know it's just if everyone's doing exactly what they're supposed to do everyone benefits so we were we were able to find it pretty quickly because the financial advisors have the the other financial people they already have them in place so so I was working with a with a great financial advisor and a great realtor we talked about this, and it was formed actually pretty quickly because the financial advisor already had a great estate planning attorney that they worked with, a great accountant, and a great property and casualty insurance uh, agent. I mean, so it was pretty easy because on that side of it, if a financial advisor doesn't have an estate planner, an accountant, and an insurance person that they're working with, they're probably not doing business. I mean, those are really essential. It's, it's almost like a real estate agent not having a lender and an escrow agent or a closing attorney that they work with closely. It's, it's, it's necessary to them doing business. So it was actually pretty easy to set up. Perfect. Great. And I, I definitely have a couple questions coming in. And for anyone who has questions, please type them in. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time uh, for a live Q&A, so please type in any questions. But a couple that have come in here, Mark, uh, they wanted you to just please go over that Core 7 again. If you could just list uh, who is included in the Core 7. Uh, a couple individuals might have missed that. I'd just like you to do that one more time, please. Okay. It's the real estate agent, mortgage originator, financial advisor, estate planning attorney, real estate attorney, property and casualty insurance agent, and the accountant. Is that all seven? Excellent. Yeah, that's I think so. Absolutely. So hopefully everyone got that. Again, it's all in the book. Uh, but really, as you notice, he's, he's, he's surrounding himself with professionals uh, that provide you know, a different perspective on, on the whole process, right? Everybody brings a different skill set to this, and everybody can be a contributing member to this group. So, And I'm sure probably, Mark, you know, you've learned things from this group as well, right? They, they probably share things about their side that have probably been helpful for you in your practice. Absolutely. I mean, that's been huge. I mean, that's where I found out that as a mortgage originator, any time we talk about uh, financial stuff, we should try to refer the financial advisor. I mean, there's been a lot of – because the financial advisor, when it comes to the financial side, they should be the first step before talking to an estate planning attorney, before talking to a to an accountant or even an insurance agent, if they're going to talk about you know their umbrella policy to protect their assets, 
the financial advisor should be the first point of contact. So as a lender, they taught me to anytime something financial comes up, to always, that's why I say advisor on my team, not financial advisor, because I want the handoff, I want the handoff to go to the financial advisor, because then they can bring in the estate planner, the accountant, and the property and casualty insurance agent uh, when it makes most sense based on what they have for financial goals. Sorry for the long answer, but that's... <laughs> oh, no, that's perfect, perfect. And I think one thing I, I didn't touch on as we talked about it, but you know, we asked, you know, how long did it take you to get this group set up? And you, know, you started talking about it. But for many of you on this call, realize that people in your current network may have the connections that you really need already. You know, it's not a matter of starting from scratch. You know, many of you have connections. You, you have agents and maybe attorneys that you've worked with. But now you can go one step further. Okay, now you can really go one step further, putting in your core seven all-star team, so to speak, uh, and really focusing on that, as you see, Mark's had tremendous success for years using this. And that's why he's, he's accomplished as he is. He's been able to write a book about this because he knows how powerful it, it can be. Uh, and really having that network of people that really look to you to provide that professional service. And, and really uh, being able to focus on that as part of your, your business plan, having that Core 7. Uh, and then, you know, you mentioned all the, the meetings. Now, not only is there any time, I'm just curious, you know, obviously Core 7, um, you know, you're spending a lot of time with these individuals. Do you ever do anything non-work related? Maybe do you ever hang out with them at a ball game or is there any type of interactions like that or do you guys keep it strictly business or do you really feel that you have friendships with these individuals now? No, we, de we definitely have friendships. We, uh, we try to keep the meetings as professional as possible, but then we, we, uh, we do things um, we do things both professional and fun related. Like we'll go to, uh, you know, we'll do like a, a ball game with some of our clients too. So it's 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 a it's a fun and professional network. Absolutely. Excellent. And I think for many of us, you know, that know that when you really can have those friendships, it's not just about being, you know, this this professional relationship. But when you can really develop these these individuals into friends of yours, you know, that that really comes through when you're referring somebody. You know, that confidence will come through to your clients. You know, you're not referring just, just some random individual. You're referring a friend that you trust, that you have confidence in as a professional. Uh, so really, we'd say, you know, not only is it one great thing to have a relationship with a referral partner, but really get to know these individuals, uh, get to know how they think, and, and really get to know, you know, some of the things that aren't just work-related. I think that can really be a big impact uh, as you try to grow those relationships and really as you you just really grow your business as a whole. And one thing too, I know, you know, Mark has, we've, you've already provided a tremendous amount of, of value. Uh, but I know, I just want to talk quickly about your, your really, your transition into being a sales manager. And, you know, we talked about you managing your team and some of the things that you've now found yourself becoming more of a teacher. So for any sales managers on this call, is there any advice that you could give those individuals who maybe have recently transitioned into the role? or currently managing a team and really some, some feedback and some help that you can provide for them? Well, I'm, I'm a sales manager, which, so I, I train the, um, the originators on my team, which I have, about, I have six, including myself, um, right now. I train them on more the, the prospecting and the, um, you know, how to grow their business and create a database, some of the basic stuff. And then there's a branch manager who, you know, does the P and L and is is more in the uh, you know like if a loan has trouble and it has to, has to help get it pushed through to closing, um, that would be more on on his plate. So so it's a little different, but on the the end that I that I work on, um, I would say the most important thing is just to really keep them prospecting, keep them doing things that generate leads. Um, all the problems in this business start when you don't have enough business coming in. You know doing quality work so that your people refer you. Um, just, just really helping an agent grow their business by, you know, setting up some of the systems that we all know. You just, it's, it, this, this business moves very fast and we, we get extremely busy and then you end up doing a lot of busy stuff but not the really important stuff. So that's just what I, I try to focus on, just having them, you know, set up these networks, you know, get the referral business going, 
set up their database so that it's being contacted with, uh, I, use, I use Rate Watch, the old uh, Rate Watch report from Mortgage Coach. That's just been great, um, whether rates are up or down. And just having that set up so some of that stuff happens automatically um, and just keep them, keep them prospecting. Um, as for the branch manager and pushing loans through and how to, how to do that, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that much of that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Perfect. I have a couple questions I wanted to get to. I'm going to be sharing Mark's email. Uh, please, as you all know, uh, Mark is an active producer. He is managing a team. Uh, so he is, you know, happy to provide an email for you all. Just type that into the chat box. I'm going to be sh uh, sharing it on the screen here in a second. Uh, so just know you, you will definitely, if you'd like to reach out to him to find out more about the book, maybe you'd like to purchase it in bulk. The book is available on Amazon, so you can definitely do that. Uh, but a couple things. Uh, question here, you know, I, interesting, but what should someone be looking in uh, when, when putting together your course seven, you know, are you looking at things like the size of someone's practice or are you just looking at their network in general, their, their presence in the market? When, when putting together this course seven, what, what's probably a couple of the, let's say the number one thing you're looking for in a partner when you're putting together the course seven, what would you like to see from their business? Um, Number one, well, the first thing would be, you know, the type of person they are. Is, there, is it someone that you'd like to work with? But, I mean, that, that, that's normal for any, any relationship. Um, specific to the Core 7 is really are they willing to execute the set process and the set system? Um, like, for example, I mean, I could, I could give examples of each profession, but, like, for example, the real estate agent, you know, are they referring the lender and the real estate attorney early? You know, is it is it a pre? Are they pre-approving people and letting you do a full consultation with them before they find the house? You know, something simple like that. Uh, on the financial advisor, you know, there's there's specific cross-sell points where they're actually supposed to to refer the real estate agent. Um, our financial advisor in the group has given like nine or ten closings to the real estate agent in the group because he asked this question we call it the referral generator he basically asks every client that he sits with how's your relationship with your real estate agent whenever uh, home value comes up and if you think about it a financial advisor has to figure out what someone's net worth is pretty much every time they meet with them net worth obviously the value of that property is going to come into play so this financial advisor would say, you know, what do you think the value of your property is? You know, um, great. How's your relationship with your real estate agent who specializes in equity assessments? And if they don't have one, he'll make the introduction to the real estate agent on our team. And it's just really, you know, getting relationships. If that, if that financial advisor is willing to execute that with all the clients they meet, then I know everything's going to work because I know my realtor's going to have a lot of people to work with, a lot of people to stay in touch with. So the number one thing would be, are they willing to execute the system as they're supposed to? And each person in the group has very specific steps that they're supposed to, supposed to execute with everyone they speak to. And that's what we manage to in the group who basically say, you know, I haven't received any referrals from you. How is the referral generator question going? I mean, have you met with any clients? Because you're either not asking it or every single one of them is saying no. They don't want to talk to me. So let's, let's talk about that. It, that that's the most, if they're willing to do what they're supposed to do, the group will work. So that, that would be number one by far. Excellent. Excellent. And I know, I'm, I believe you do have an assistant. A couple of individuals are asking. Do you have an assistant? I'm pretty sure you do. And, but how many how many members are you currently managing right now? Originators on your team? Originators on my team or or my origination team? Your your my personal team. team. That's a, yeah, your personal team. I have a, a team captain who does a little bit of everything, uh, and I have a great processor that that works just with me. I, I at one time had a team of six, and. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I managed it properly. Uh, it didn't work out as well. Um, but a, a good solid for me, a good solid team of three. Um, I'm doing about 50 million in volume, uh, which is which is really where I like to be right now to be able to do all the other things I do. Um, 
and uh, just my, my team captain who's been with me for, for almost 10 years and uh, a really solid, solid processor who's my own processor. I'm the only originator she processes for. That's great. And something me and you talked about, Mark, you know, you said for many years, consistent $100 million in, in production per year. But one of the things you've transitioned into is, you know, as you have a family and, and you've really looked at, you know, spending your, your time, uh, one of the things you do now I, I thought was really great is using Mortgage Coach and using these strategies you outlined in your book and what you've talked about today is you're able to still hit, hit that $50 million in production. But you told me, you know, you're trying to work about four days a week. Uh, if you can, and, and spend time with your family and things like that, which I think is great. And, and for everybody on this call, remember what we say all the time, you know, it's one thing to be successful and make a lot of money, uh, but I think what we want to make sure you can be is the best originator possible, but also enjoying, you know, a quality of life that, that this industry and, and this career really allows you to do. So, you know, Mark, you have provided an excellent, excellent presentation today, giving us really a lot of takeaways for everybody. So I've really just asked that you stay on the call for the next couple minutes. I'm going to go through a couple more slides. I want everybody to make sure they know. Uh, a couple new uh, features actually hit edge for a lot of you on this call. I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. To skip the bagel, remember, take a look at that presentation. Just download the app and type in Savage in there. That's Dave Savage's presentation. It'll you know walk you right through that presentation, how you can show somebody to brew your own coffee pay off your mortgage much sooner. And one of the things I really learned from Dave, ask your client how old they want to be when they pay when they want to pay off their loan. Okay, you'll be surprised. Just because they're getting a 30 year loan doesn't necessarily mean they want to pay it off in 30 years. Oftentimes they'd like to pay it off by the time their child is graduating college. Or maybe it's their college getting out of high their client getting or I'm sorry, their child getting out of high school. And being able to really match their goals inside of the presentation can really be a huge uh, value add for them. But one of the other things as we talk about this, I uh, talked about the app. Make sure everybody, you download that app if you haven't done it already. Uh, everybody here at Mortgage Coach, you see the Mortgage Coach team on the screen, everybody here has the mobile strategies that we live by. Uh, we're constantly trying to find better and you know easier ways for you to grow your business using mobile uh, because we know it's a great way for you to reach your clients. And for these coaching calls, uh, every Tuesday at 9, so if you miss them for any reason, we have had some great ones in the past couple weeks, Ken De Leon, uh, we had What Loan Officers Can Learn from a Navy SEAL. If you miss any of those and you'd like to watch them, just email support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll be sure to make and make sure you can get those links. You know, We have them all recorded for you. Uh, also, our Thursday training call, we have some really, really great features that just hit edge. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of I'm really excited about is if you'd like to show a client how 60 months from now they could take $200 and invest it back towards the loan, maybe they're going to be paying off an auto loan, or maybe their MI is scheduled to, to fall off the loan at a certain point in time, and you'd like to show them the impact in a delayed manner, if you'd like to show them the down-the-road type of investments, whether it's back towards the mortgage, to their bank account, or maybe into that investment vehicle they're working, you can do that in Edge now. It was a big, big want for many of the members, and our development team has worked very, very hard to bring that to Edge, and you can do it. So this Thursday at 9 a.m., if you'd like to know, uh, you can jump on that call led by our great support staff. They're going to walk you through not only some of the strategies we talk about each and every week, but how you can use some of these new features. And for many of you trying to bring in your referral partners and sort of how you can keep them in the loop, number one thing, Mark, I'm sure you're really, really good at this, but you know, providing transparency to your referral partners. That was the number one request from one of the top agents in the country out of his originators. They want transparency. So we heard that loud and clear. So inside of Edge now, you can actually include a partner uh, with an alert. Okay, so whether it's a partner report or a client report, you can keep them in the loop. So if someone needs to take action on a follow-up call, there's no waiting around anymore. You can take action as soon as possible so you can get that client to commit you know, and move forward with that loan. So join us every Thursday at 9. You know, today was more about you know, growing your business, high-level strategic. But when you want to get into the nuts and bolts of building wow presentations for clients or partners, no better place to be than Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Jump on that call. Ask questions. Really, you know, it's there. That those sessions are for you. And if you don't know how to get signed up, just look inside of your Edge account. There's a banner that rotates that gives you that login credential. 
or just email support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll be glad to set you up and get you on those calls. A couple other things I want to make sure for everybody who's still on this call, as you really want to be the best LO you can be, let us know some feedback about today's call. You know, please, we, we'd love to hear from it. We'll be sharing some of the, the resources from the call today on our Facebook fan page. You know, please share, share that. Connect with us. Connect with Mark on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure you can, you know, continue to grow your business with some of the strategies. You know, I know for everyone on this call, you take time out to, to use these calls to grow your business. So it's not just about hearing the call and then getting on to the same old things we're doing now. I think many of you know if we can take some of the strategies, use them in our business, you know, that's how we grow as mortgage professionals. So I told you I was going to be sharing Mark's email. Uh, Mark was glad enough uh, to, to do that. So Mark at MyCore7.com. Again, it's on the screen, Mark at MyCore7.com. Take a look at that. Um, you can use it. I also dropped that in the chat box. Um, like I said, guys, please uh, try not to, even though you have Mark's contact information, he's a busy guy, please keep it to email. Uh, if you do connect via phone, uh, let, it that, let that be at Mark's discretion. But please email Mark at MyCore7.com. Uh, you know, he said he'd be happy to answer questions. And for anyone who'd like to access the book, you can get the book on Amazon. Uh, What's Your Rate uh, by Mark Mayoka, uh, Mayoka. And then you could also, again, just email him if you'd like to buy in bulk. Maybe you'd like to buy it for your office, for some agents. You can do that. Uh, and one of the parting things I'd like everybody to know, and again, you know, where the magic happens and your comfort zone. You know, that it's a little bit different, okay? You're going to have comfort zones outside of that. But you'll find that when you leave your comfort zone, as Mark said, you know, identify the course seven. Get yourself out there host a home buying seminar, uh, some of those things that really you might not feel comfortable with, but when you when you really push yourself, push your business, and, and that's where you're going to see that magic happen, and no better time than right now to be an originator in today's business. Uh, so really, we're happy you could be on this call. Mark, again, thank you. Thank you so much for providing such a, a great uh, amount of content for everybody. And, you know, is there anything you'd like to say to the members as we wrap up here? You know, for any parting words to the group. No, just thank you so much for, for having me on. I really enjoyed it. Great, great. So thank you, Mark. Again, great call. Everybody, please join us next Tuesday for another great coaching call. And then, again, this Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific, join us for the Q&A to better your, your skills, uh, get better with Mortgage Coach Edge and Rate Watch, and really just learn some of the top ways you can be leveraging your membership to get an immediate ROI. This is not about giving you the system and the software and saying good luck. This is about helping you grow your business to be the best originator you can be. So with that said, my name is Anthony Savala, Success Coach here at Mortgage Coach. Thanks for everybody for being on this call today. And I'll leave you with the last parting words from Mortgage Coach. Be a teacher, be the obvious choice, tailor your advice, and deliver unique value to each client and every partner you're talking to. Happy originations, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.